Greetings, this is the 19th Biennale of Sydney and we're here at Cockatoo Island, one of the major venues of this year's event. It's titled You Imagine What You Desire and each of the venues has been modelled around a different way of interpreting that rather ambiguous idea that you imagine what you desire. Juliana Engberg, who is the curator of this outing of the Biennale, describes Cockatoo as being a place where fantasy is being explored. So I guess you could consider it as a sort of fantasy island, if you will. The Museum of Contemporary Art is another of the Biennale of Sydney's major venues for this year's exhibition. And Juliana Engberg, the curator, has described the work that's here at the MCA as being more surrealistic. This is the surreal section of the Biennale, and we're seeing a lot of forms and media that are closely associated with the historical grouping. This is the Art Gallery of New South Wales, portion of the Biennale of Sydney. And this is the section of the sprawling exhibition that the curator, Juliana Engberg, has called the beating heart and soul of the exhibition. And here there's an interesting mix of works that shift between a, a poetic consideration of time and space with more of the sorts of surrealist ideas about art making. One of the difficulties with the Biennale of Sydney is trying to get to grips with its big idea. The curatorial theme, which comes under the title, You Imagine What You Desire, is a little ambiguous. I guess every single person imagines a slightly different thing and has different desires. And as to whether the artworks actually represent an outcome of those desires is an open question. One of the things that I really like about this Biennale is that the idea of this show is ambiguous enough to allow the viewer's own imagination to enter the space, to be part of the process of engaging with the artworks. The works generally aren't didactic, they're not setting out to tell you anything uh, in, in a way that's going to alienate you, but at the same time I find it a little frustrating that sometimes there's a disconnection between what the artist is doing and how we're meant to respond to it. Is it an intellectual process? Is it an emotional process? I think it probably takes a little time to, to assess and for those ideas to settle, but there's plenty here to engage with. But as an intellectual statement about where we are in the world right now, who knows? I don't know what this show is saying. 